Hello and welcome to this little tutorial where we'll be building a Comunda 8 connector uh, with Java. And um, there are lots of connectors that exist. You've probably seen them if you've used Comunda. Here is our uh, web modeler. And if you have any task, you've probably seen all the usual task types and a whole bunch of pre-built connectors that you might need to connect with multiple systems or whatever. Now, what we're doing today is we're dealing with a use case in which you need to build something that, let's say, is quite com complicated, requires business logic that only you understand, and you want to write that code yourself and have Comunda orchestrate it. Um, these connectors are pretty great, but they are very um, common. Let's say Slack connector is something everyone needs to use, but what if you wanted to connect to one of your own systems? What if you wanted to make multiple calls and change the data before sending it back into the process engine? Well, those are great use cases for building um, outbound connectors that you can write and run independently and um, uh, in a distributed fashion from the orchestration. So that's what we'll do today. We are going to build a, um, a job worker in Java, running it locally on a machine and then having it or, uh, orchestrated by a model. And uh, specifically, we're going to make Niall do some work because um, yeah, Niall should do some work. Let's get started. We're going to start um, with the worker itself. And this is actually quite an easy place to start because um, if you follow the link below, there's a template for um, building a uh, connector already in Java. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, talk through it, explain how it works, and then we're going to build it, add some additional things to it, and then uh, have it run. So there's a few different ways you can do this. The first is that you can create a new repository if you have a GitHub account um, and then generate it that way. Uh, you can also just copy the, um, uh, the uh, URL and then I'm going to use uh, my local GitHub um, desktop. I'm just going to create a clone the repository. I'm going to put in the URL in there and it's going to create a local version of uh, the template. Once I create that, I'll talk through the various aspects of the template that are important to us. I'll be using um, Visual Studio Code um, in this because why not? But it doesn't really matter. You can use whatever um, IDE you prefer. So I'm going to click on here to open this project up in Visual Studio Code. And we should then be able to see uh, the project that the template is trying to create. Now, as a reminder, the template is going to be in Java and it's going to want to connect to Comunda and then do some, uh, get a job, do some work, and then send back a response with some variables. And that's what we're going to build uh, just now. Um, so this is all loading up now, which is going very, very well. So I want to talk through the various aspects. And the, the first thing, which is really important, is that there are two big sections here. There's the main and the test. Now, um, Every connector can be separated into the connector runtime, which is the generic code that does the work of connecting to um, uh, ZB, uh, which is the Comunda engine. And the other bit is your business logic. Now, when building a connector, that logic can be split quite easily into, um, into uh, here, into main, and then in test, you'll have the runtime. Now, why is that? Because it's possible to actually take your connector um, business logic, your code, the, the core of what your connector is doing, and then deploy that to an existing runtime that you have. Now, for this example, we're going to use the test uh, section here that contains the runtime in order to simply run the uh, business logic. But in reality, if we were to build this, it will be built into a uh, a jar that would contain just your business logic, and then you would deploy that to the runtime. This is documented and I've listed the document below, but we won't go into that today. Today is all about building a connector, running it locally, and then uh, seeing what happens. So let's talk through the rest of the project. We'll start first with the um, business logic of the connector, and that's found, the key stuff is right here in my connector function. So if we click in there, you'll see there's some code running in here. And let me explain some of this. So we have the name of the connector, then because we have this lovely handy um, uh, annotation. And then we also have the inputs we're expecting, one uh, variable called authentication and one called message. And the other thing we have is the type. 
This is really important. The type is actually what correlates the work that needs to be done with the uh, with the worker itself. So it's how it's going to be able to find the right jobs to work on. Um, so we'll change that and make it something more interesting. Maybe we'll make it, um, let's say, uh, make Nile do work. OK, so that is the name of the of the event that is fired by the Kamuna engine to uh, that's picked up by the worker and then they will get the context and do some work. So what else is happening in here? Well, it's got this execute method, which subsequently calls this execute connector method. And here is actually where you would put your business logic. So this is this spot right here is where your custom code goes. This is where you do what the worker is supposed to do. In the template, it doesn't do too much. It basically just checks if the message has the word fail in it. And then if it does, it throws an error. And if it doesn't, it actually creates a return variable um, and then sends that back. And it's going to have message, which is whatever uh, was sent in with message received in front of it. Okay, so that's that's it. Now, there's some things about these variables that are kind of interesting. The first is that because Commander 8 works with JSON uh, objects uh, by default, we have here authentication, which is actually um, uh, a more complex, it's not a primitive variable, messages. So for this authentication message, you see we have in the DTO here, we have a um, authentication, which involves um, two variables, a user and a token, neither of which can be empty. OK, so this is defining this uh, thing here is defining the variable we need. If you wanted to if you wanted to create a complex variable to send into the worker, you would then define it in the same way. And then here we just have a simple um, string that shows we are taking in the message, which also can't be empty. And we also need this authentication variable. OK, so that's the request. Cool. So that is um, the most important stuff about the business logic. Again, your connection about the the core of your connector is all here including your business logic your variables are also in the dto here and that's the core of the thing that you would deploy and want to change so let's talk about the runtime how it connects to the engine itself so now we're going to go down here into test i mentioned in the beginning that this reason this is in test is so that you can run the connector locally for test reasons, um, and also because you don't want to wrap up your business logic so much with the runtime. So looking at the runtime, this is just an application that runs. It's going to run whatever the local connector is. Um, it's not too important what this does. It's a bunch of test functionality. Um, I won't talk about it too much. You can see all the test cases that are here. Um, the key thing in here is that this is what we do to run our code, our, our connector, and in here, in the resources, you have the application uh, properties. This is, of course, for Spring. And this is the thing that ensures that we are able to connect to um, uh, our Commanda instance to be able to get work and complete work. Um, OK, so that's the key to um, that's the key to our um, uh, our connector template so far. So let's make some changes and let's make sure that this actually gets started. I'm going to do that by taking, let's say, the um, lovely connector logic here. I'm going to go back to my connector. And the first thing you may remember I changed was I changed this thing here, make Nile do work. So I'm going to copy this. Now, what do I do with this exactly? Let's go back to our model. So in our model, I had this little box. I'm going to change this to a service task. Cool. And I'm going to say, um, make Nile do work. Cool. And in here, I'm going to add the type, which is the correlation key. So you can see here that the make Nile do work is going to correlate with the message, um, with, the, with what the request is being made. The other thing we have to deal with is um, our return variables. So that's actually quite easy. We want to just take the return variables and, um, and put them into the context. For that, we need to go into uh, headers here. We need to add a key, which will be a result variable. And then the value. What is the value that we're going to call the result variable? Let's call it vars from uh, Nile. 
Okay, so then what's going to happen is the response from our connector is going to go into a variable called virus from Nile. Okay, so we have our task type, we have our response variable, and um, now we can deploy it. So let's click, um, oh, let's give it a good name actually first. Let's uh, make Nile do some work. Okay, so that's the name of our little uh, task here. So I'm going to deploy this to, I'm going to deploy it to Alfie my favorite um, uh, little um, a cluster there. So this is where we're sending it to the engine so it can be started. And uh, we should notice now that I haven't started the connector yet. I'll do that in a moment. Um, I'm gonna deploy this. So, and then uh, we are um, sort of ready to try and set up our connector properly. Um, interestingly, before I set up the connector, I can start an instance of this already in preparation. So I mentioned in the beginning the variables that are required for this to start up. It needs message and it needs um, uh, a more complicated object called um, authentication. And this can be found in the readme of the template. It looks like this. It's got a variable called message called my message authentication, uh, which is a variable with two other primitive types inside user and token. So this, if I click on start and run this, It'll start an instance of that in um, operate. Once operate loads up, we'll be able to see the point at which the process is. So there we are. And obviously it's waiting there because we haven't started up our worker. Okay, so to start up our worker, we need to then think about how we're gonna make that connect to um, the, the engine. And that's actually quite easy. And I'll do that right now. Connecting the worker we've just made to the um, engine requires uh, a key value that we can, like an authentication key that we need to give the worker so that it's actually able to um, connect. And that's actually really easy. We can do that by going to uh, the console and we can go into the cluster that we're using. Uh, you may remember that I'll be using my favorite cluster, which is Alfie. And I'm gonna go into that cluster. And I'm gonna create um, uh, an API, um, uh, key credentials. So here I'm going to create a new client. It's going to be called uh, Nile does work. And you can see here that its scope is it's, a, it's connecting to ZB. It's a ZB worker. So I'm going to create this. Okay, super. Now this is a really cool part. Depending on how you're using the connector and how you're building it, you'll have different um, uh, ways of adding it to your project. Now we're using an application properties. So I'm just going to copy this and this has everything we need. The region of the server, it has the ID of the cluster, the, the ID of that client that's connecting and a secret for that client. So let's go back to our, um, our code and we put that right in here. I'm just going to get rid of this because we don't need it. Actually, you know what? We do need to keep this bottom line. Uh, so we'll keep the bottom line and we'll add this. Um, so this is now going to be able to connect to, um, uh, let's just save that and we'll also save this. So if I turn this on, if by running this Java class, what's going to happen is it should be able to uh, start up. It's going to be able to get the work that's done, do something with it and then send back a variable. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay. So let's run this thing. I'm going to right click here and click run Java. Uh, that's going to hopefully start up everything I need. You may need to do a Maven install first, just in case you might want to do that, because it's going to download all of the dependencies that are required. Um, I probably already have those installed. We'll find out. Um, so there we are. We're starting up um, our Spring Boot application. As I said, if it did everything correctly, I should be able to connect directly to um, uh, the engine. There we go. Looking good. Okay, looks like it successfully started and did some work. Um, we can prove that by heading to our web app here. Let's just close this and taking a look at our model, uh, our operate, there's operate here. So hopefully it's picked up this and done that work. So let's refresh this. Okay, and it has, and we can see virus from Nile contains the right property. So if we start up another one, uh, we should be able to see that do its work again. So we can start one from um, right here. Let's prepare the, from our modeler, we can just click start, add the variables we need, click run, 
quickly go to operate. Hopefully we're in time to see it run. Let's see if we can see it run. Okay, we were too slow. It already ran and it finished. And as we can see, we have an instance done. So if you wanted to maybe do something else with this, it's very, very simple. You would want to go in here and actually make this do something more interesting. Your business logic will go here. That can mean messing around with variables. It can mean calling external services, doing whatever you want. And then you can always send back your results by using this call right here um, uh, in the execute um, method. Very, very simple. Uh, hope that was useful. And I hope you have fun creating some workers. Cheerio. Bye-bye.